All right, so it is the October Reclaim Hosting Community Chat, um, and this one we're calling Looking Ahead to OE Global 24. Um, and I am uh, very delighted to be joined by uh, Alan Levine, and who's going to be talking about the conference. So um, <laughs> we're, we're really excited, uh, excited for the conference, but excited to have you here too. Oh, well, well, thank you so much. And, and always, uh, uh, again, for the, the radio audience, I'm wearing my Reclaim Hosting t-shirt because, <laughs> I mean, not because I'm trying to flatter you guys, but like, uh, anyhow, I just, uh, like, it's long, a good ago, shirt. long ago, like, uh, I was with DreamHost and I had all these blog posts about how terrible DreamHost was. And it's like, I haven't had to think about that for a long time. It's just like, my web hosting just works. And um and of course, you you know, y'all do more than that. You do these these meetings and um, and so much more. So uh, happy to be here. And hello, Mark Corbett Wilson. Good to see you. Yeah. So um, so what's up with this conference? <laughs> <laughs> so a conference is this thing where people from you know, <laughs> yeah, well, you're just back from the Open Ed Conference, right? And so yeah. like um, I work for Open Education Global, and so you know we're on the, some of the same same turf and uh, a lot of people participate in, in both, but um, our conference, um, you know, it's an annual, you know, of course, academic conference, like they always are. You come together, you go to a city, you watch a hockey game. No, I did that last year because it was in Edmonton. Um, and so this year, uh, again, being a global organization, like it, it bounces around and this year it's in Brisbane, Australia. And it's like, Oh yeah, it'd be great to go to Australia. And like, it's a long effing way to get to Australia, um, not just for the travel, but um, just for the ability for people to travel. And, and um, but still, um, you know, we have a, a good response and the program uh, will be final program will be published soon. Um, I have the, um, the website. I mean, you can go to the website and read about it. Uh, the theme is, uh, let's see if I'm right. It's open as everybody's business. So it, it's pretty broad. Um, and there's going to be some interesting uh, keynote speakers um, uh, from the the um, the glam, the gallery. Li uh, what was it glam? I always forget. Gla Galleries, libraries, archives, and museums. Thank you, Mark. Save me. I should I should have memorized that. Um, Lifeline. Yeah. Um, and, and but also it's been really great to connect. Um, Cause like I, I have some experience in Australia, but it's pretty dated now from, from a long time ago. Um, and so uh, really the, the network of open educators there that I've been, you know, connecting with related to this conference is, is really impressive. And, and also uh, really driven by the library community. And so um, they've achieved a remarkable amount of collaboration, like, for it's not only Australia, it's the region. So it's Australia, New Zealand, and, and the Pacific region of uh, being able to provide like there's a collective like Pressbooks platform. And they they have a sort of a you know an email, a network with monthly meetings, kind of like this. Um, and so that that community aspect um, that Australia has done um, doesn't really always get a lot of light of day, you know, and so um, and, and then, you know, I feel for them because every time they tune into one of our events, they're up at like 4 a.m. or something like this. And so this is a chance to shift that in some ways because, you know, the bulk of the day, um, you know, the, you know, 9 to 4 p.m. timing of the presentation is going to be like overnight for most of North America or you know, early evening and late night for North America and, and even more in, in Europe. Mm -hmm. And so, um and so, like, I've always, since I've been with OE Global, like, I started in the pandemic, so I never got to, I never got to go to the conference. I, I never was at any of their conferences before. Um, and, uh, you know, our conferences were virtual the, the first year and the, and the second year. And then uh, we had one in France, but it was still on the heel of the pandemic. Um, I didn't, you know, I, we had the option to not go because I had just gotten over my first bout with with covid and so i thought it'd be interesting for me as part of the conference team to be like not there and see how i could create a sense of participation um and so i kind of came up with this idea i call it the and conference and and the idea is that um that concept from the 
when you learn how to do improv, which I never really been trained, I just make it up. I improv it, but it's this thing called yes. And, and so when, when you're in conversation, like we are now, you know, you, you, you add and build on to what other people do. And so, you know, what we, what I try to do is like, not try to give the conference experience of being in Brisbane or in France to people who aren't there. Uh, yeah. We, we stream some of the presentations live. Um, but we did some things like, um, I think the first year I tried, oh, there's little prairie chickens running out my window. Sorry. <laughs> Animal life out there. Uh, we, we did, uh, what was it? The Twitter spaces thing. Like sure. we did live audio and we had things during the break where people could have conversations. Um, we did a keynote rewatch and then we tried to, um, generate, um, kind of asynchronous discussion activity in our, we have a discourse powered, um, not discord discourse, if people get mixed <laughs> yeah. up, but they're both good platforms. That's our community space. Um, and so the idea is like, okay, you're not at the conference, but you can still say like, oh, well, I'm doing this related work here, or um, I have a question here. And so trying to create some ways of participating or joining in for those who, who aren't at the conference, but not selling it as a conference experience. Uh, and so um, I'm trying to do that again this year. Um, you know, last year in Edmonton, I think we had a, a lot of live streams and I did some uh, StreamYard webcast, you know, from the, the floor and just like, I, I think I, I was sitting there in the booth and like people would walk by looking at me and I had this little microphone out and they'd like, look, and I say, come on, wanna be on the internet? <laughs> and, and just get people to have some conversation. Um, but you know to let people tap into that uh and so uh, you know i'm trying some of that and uh but this really idea has been percolating for a long time based upon you know ds106 radio which you know i i saw it from the beginning and and i i was very active i i've kind of fallen off my my radio chops um but there was always that magic of going live on the radio and you know in the early the pre-cambrian days when um you know someone would go to a conference and they would just spontaneously say hey i'm live at this conference or they'd be sitting in a session and just say like what the heck i'm going to broadcast it mm -hmm. um, a live stream and it was sort of there's that real excitement of um when you're live that you know it's not there in a pre-recorded video and yeah. I, I always you know jim jim groom always talked about in general, like DS-106 having like the scent of eventness. He had this word eventness. And it was like, I hear all this like laughter and, and, and activity going on in the other room. And it's like, I'm in the wrong session because something is going on out there. Sure. And, and that's, that's what Jim does, right? Just in, in his personality and the way he, he is. Um, but that's kind of like what, you know, DS-106 does. And, and that's what DS-106 radio is. It's kind of, you know, you try to explain it to someone and they're like, oh, yeah, I, I know what a radio is or <laughs> yeah, I know what the Internet is, but I don't see them. But, you know, when you experience it um, from the simplicity um, and, and that really beautiful concept when when, you know, the, the story of like, you know, Jim or Brian Lamb was just saying, like, it'd be great to have a radio station. And, and Grand Potter just went out and did it. <laughs> he figured out airtime and all this stuff. And, and Grant's philosophy was like, I want to have an internet radio station, but I don't want to manage it. Mm -hmm. And so um, that to this day, that DS-106 radio has the same login password to go live. <laughs> and like, um, <laughs> I, do you guys laugh about that? Mostly guarded secret. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's a beautiful thing. So I, I've been thinking about, um, you know, I, I sometimes said it'd be great for a global organization like ours to have our own radio station. Like we have people around the world and, and why not have people have like streams from their classroom or just take over like a time slot to, to share, you know, like radio does what's going on in, in their world, because um, it's, it's hard to know through the media, um, especially through news and, and, you know, and, and all the distortions now. And so what is more real than the voice of, of a person um, in a place? And, um, and, and so I, I, at the OER 24 conference, I uh, was talking to 
Myron Deepwell and, and Meredith was there and we were just sitting around like during the, one of the last sessions, I think we were all a little burnt out. We just were having coffee. And I just started talking about this idea and Meredith is like, well, I'm thinking about that too, of, of a conference using um, live radio um, mm -hmm. as a means to share the experience and augment it. So that's a long way of saying, I have this idea um, and I approached Meredith and Reclaim was willing to hope. And, um, you know, you're, you're going to lend us DS-106 radio or just, you know, I'm going to monopolize it for um, the couple days of the conference um, to have some live streams from Brisbane. So, you know, it should be easy to broadcast a couple sessions, some of the conversational things. But I, I'm more interested in just populating a schedule with um, things that people share. Um, and so that's I'm, I'm having to figure out now, how do I ask people? Uh, to do that. So I've talked to a lot of people and I, I got some people who say like, well, yeah, I, I this is the work I do in, in open education, but I would love to do a, a set of music. I was like, well, that's great. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we have a lot of material like, you know, we have archives of all the DS-106 summer radio camp that we could repurpose. We have our podcast. Um, and so um, the, I uh, I, I and generally start off with like I come up with sort of like a a thing or a brand or something and so um, I've always been fascinated uh, in the history of Australia they had this thing called in the 60s and 70s called School of the Air um, to reach students who lived in the remote because most of Australia is very remote mm -hmm. <laughs> like it's sparsely inhabited um, but there's children who live in these like small ranching farming communities who need to, to go to school. And so um, there was sort of a service called, uh, there was Doctors of the Air, um, hey Tim, um, who, who had the flying doctor service. So they, they brought medical care to these communities by going around in airplanes or communicating with people by shortwave radio. So like, you know, you're out on some, you know, remote place, you know, 100K north of Alice Springs and you're like, you know, my, my kid has had these symptoms and you call a doctor on the radio. Well, they said we could do that for school and they have this thing and it's still in existence called School of the Air. And so um, in the 60s and 70s, it was over radio. Um, I, I, I used to think it was like broadcast terrestrial radio, but I think it was more shortwave radio. Um, oh. And they would do things like... Um, they would sometimes send packages or they would airdrop like school materials to, to kids in these remote locations. Um, and, and this, this great side thing happened. I was doing a podcast um, with one of our board members is uh, Martin Dugiamas, who's the CEO of Moodle. And I always have a question. I ask people like, what, what was your early school experience? And he started saying like, well, I grew up in the remote part of the outback and I, I, I went to school on school of the air and, and so like, here's a, a person who lived that experience. So the whole thing, I wanted to play into that understanding of an Australian motif. Um, and so I'm calling what we're doing conference of the air. <laughs> so I just stole, I'm, I'm remixing their name. Um, yeah. So the idea is, you know, during November 13th to 15th during the conference, you know, anytime you go to, um, you know, Taylor's helped me build a custom landing page, but it's basically DS-106 radio and you'll hear something. And um, um, I'm learning, or I will be learning how to uh, put things into the program schedule um, so they play automatically. And um, it could be anything from pre-recorded stuff to live um, to I'm hoping I can figure out how to put in some different um, radio stations from around the world because there's a huge... I found these websites that list, you know, all these radio stations that do um, live broadcasts like, you know, WFMU, which is the DS-106 fallback. Um, and then and then I'm going to stop because I've just been blabbering and I see everybody nodding their heads and <laughs> they're laughing along. Um, by the way, I hate talking. I'm an introvert. <laughs> you got to know this. This is killing me. Um, but, You're doing a um, good no, job. It's not killing me. Um, I, I want to have something like to build up some excitement for this. Um, so the last week of October, I'm, I've been calling it to my colleagues, the, the pre unconference. And so <laughs> I, I, I just want to run some things, some live things I want to do. Um, so we're going to have a scheduled session with, with 
um, Taylor and, and hopefully Meredith and Jim. And so we're going to announce the school of the uh, the school of the air, the conference of the air, and we'll do it on the radio. And and I completely forgot I was going to see if I could do this. And so um, I'm going to see if I, I've been just be and look at that. I have just set up a broadcast on DS106 radio. Ex- yeah. So we're, we're simulcast now. We're simulcast, <laughs> except I have the thing wrong that I'm hearing my own sound oh, <laughs> in my sure. ears. Has this ever happened to you? <laughs> yeah. So, Speech um, jammer. Yeah. yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop because this is driving me crazy but uh i, I can actually do it i was on ds106 radio for a couple minutes or <laughs> seconds um but um october like the last week in october um i have a few things lined up and then there are other activities going on that we're just going to put on a schedule so if anybody knows of like webinars um or online events going on the last week of October, it's going to be kind of like the way we do open education week. We'll just try to list. So um, one of my favorites is um, there's um, out of Oregon is open Oregon resources. And um, for the past couple of years, they do something on Halloween um, that it's related to open education, but Amy Hoffer always brands it with something that's kind of related to like scary things about OER. And uh, I wrote to her and I said, Amy, I, you know, I had this idea to do something. Are you doing another Halloween themed one? And she was like, oh, no, I hadn't planned on it. <laughs> and I was like, well, that's OK. And then she wrote me back a week later and she said, thanks, Alan. So she's doing one about like, you know, AI, you know, the scariness of AI, which is perfect. Um, and so there'll be some of those. Um, uh, and I'm trying to rumble through my head. Uh, we, we have someone Australian time that'll happen. And so some will be some StreamYard web streaming and some will be um, radio only. And some will probably be both since Taylor told me how the big secret for that, um, how to do um, use StreamYard as the way, which worked well for your summer camp, right? Um, because um, you can't expect a lot of people to figure out the nuts and bolts of, of doing the live radio, um, as I just demonstrated. <laughs> um, there's a lot, there's a lot of complication with that kind of thing. And, and it's on the one hand, I do want the tools to be easier. Right. But on the other hand, I love how wild west it feels when you're yeah. doing internet radio stuff. Um, you can get really creative with it. You know, I, we, we've talked a, a decent amount, like internally at reclaim about like the radio format, in reference to the summer camp, but also the upcoming conference of the air. And, and I kind of realized that like, for me, like there's a lot of advantages, right. Um, in some ways there's some disadvantages too, but I think possibly if I really had to like sum up my favorite thing about doing internet radio in a conference context versus like zoom webinars or name a webinar tool, right. Uh, like a video one, um, is that it's just different. Like that's really like, and I, I know that different isn't always better, but I, I do actually think in the case of we're talking about something you're participating in remotely, I think different can be just a little bit inherently better or at least less tiring sometimes. I recognize the um, the representative from <laughs> Pennsylvania. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, Taylor, one of the things that occurred to me and that worked so well with the summer camp is the whole personal on demand um, way in which each of the shows uh, becomes essentially an episode of a podcast. And you can tie RSS into that in a way that I think even virtual conferences don't take full advantage of. Right. So after the summer camp wrapped, I could go back and listen to what I missed and I could bring it into my into my um, feed catcher and listen to it on a drive or whatever. And that doesn't work if it's heavily visual, like a bunch of slides and all that kind of stuff. It, it's just such a great, um, I'm still buzzing about it. Um, but it, it's just such a great way of sp- splicing up a conference experience, um, and allowing people to asynchronously then access all of that stuff when they have to miss it for one reason or another. Yeah. And it was, I felt, I've, I, it would be really hard to measure this. And obviously DS106 Radio Summer Camp, real 
real small, you know, experience, which is part of, I think what makes it special in a lot of ways. But, um, but the, I wonder per, per amount of people who like registered, I mean, we had a registration form. It was mostly so we could gauge interest, right? There's not really behind a login in any way to participate in the conference. But I wonder like how many of those people, and I suppose I could get number like download numbers. Um, but how, how many people have actually revisited that versus how many people revisit like recordings of zoom calls from another conference. And obviously it's, it would depend on the conference, but I find what you just said, like, I find it way lower impact. I'm much more likely to go and listen to that stuff while I'm washing the dishes or doing something like that than I am to revisit a large amount of video sessions, right? I'm, I'm doing, I pilot and I just got back from open ed and that was by the way, like an impeccably run conference and they did hybrid in a lot of really good ways. I don't think it's, I'm super likely to go though and catch recordings of maybe more than two or three sessions. And that's even honestly a big ask for me this week, you know? <laughs> um, it, and maybe that's just a me problem, but like, it's harder for me to muster up that energy to I'm going to sit and watch this now versus I'm going to listen to this while I do something else. And, and I think it's made even more fun by the fact that when you did this audio format, it encourages weird and different types of things. You know, we had straight up conversations to, you know, I've got a DJ set that has meaning and can, I can tie into the context. So, you know, austerity blues to a in character discussion of an event, right. With, uh, 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 the, uh, some of the Western 106 and things like that. Like there's, it, it, I think it, it also helps that it was cool to see a diversity of stuff at that conference. And I, I, I bet we'll get a same thing, get a similar thing here because radio lends itself to that in a lot of ways, or just maybe audio as a format lends itself to that. Uh, I'm with Tim. Like I, I've been listening to them when, when I drive, I, I had a great time listening to the one you did Taylor with Dr. Oblivion. And, and I, I'm like, I, I want to, I want to try the same thing. Uh, and I will rebroadcast yours, of course, because it, it was just so wacky, but th there's, there's something else I think too. Um, we've gotten so used with this form of communication where we, um, you know, what's the gain always in, in seeing a bunch of, it's nice to see the people, but to be able to understand and have the conversation um, doesn't necessarily require, and, and, and it forces you to be tied to this screen thing. And yeah, I, I could take zoom on my phone, but, um, I, I think the audio is just, and, and it challenges us to sort of, how do we communicate, uh, through, through human voice, which is like the most reachable thing. And, and when, um, you know, I, I, I sometimes kid people like, you know, if, if you were going to share a project you were doing, and you met up with you know your colleagues and friends in a coffee shop or a bar. Um, you're not going to pull out like a list of like objectives and, <laughs> and your slide deck. You're going to just you're going to talk. And, and like I have we forgotten the, the beauty of just talking to each other um, without a script. You have that notebook LLM. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it it stole stole my lunch a little bit. Although I do hope I was going for weird and strange, and notebook LLM is intentionally super not weird or strange sounding in terms of its format. So maybe it's not really the same thing. But oh, I could I could go off on that one for a while because I think everybody I don't think anybody listens to them. They just they 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 generate them, and it's like this is kind of neat and. Um, it's yeah. a, it's a good demo. It's an impressive demo, uh, like a lot of this stuff. And I I I think I could see a, a value. I don't know. I always I've heard people express this same opinion about El notebook element, which was well, I don't really want to listen to those, but I could see feeding something about a topic I want to learn about. And I think that's a fair thought. But I'm also like, oh, so what are you putting in there about this topic you know nothing about? <laughs> that, you know, like where. Uh, where you, what documents or web pages or whatever are you putting in there? But and yeah. it's not even the most compelling. I mean, it, it's it's like the the feature that gets your attention, but Notebook LLM has much more going for it than than that. Yeah, I true. Yeah, I, I the two hours worth of the stuff, and <laughs> it becomes torturous. <laughs> yeah, and Mark just put his blog post in, which is a really good one um, yeah. on the subject that. Um, 
So oh, this is my cue. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, old white guy learned to hang back, trying to do my part. Um, so many things though. Um, Western 106 was a blast with a live earthquake, I might add, I might say. You don't get that on pre recorded uh, radio or any pre recorded event. Um, and so, uh, man, I got so much word salad. So, virtually connect, you know, Maha and Autumn's idea that's kind of faded away. I hope you can sort of steal that um, for the conference. Um, I mentioned to Taylor that I participated in something called FEDA Forum, the Fediverse Forum, which was explicitly an unconference um, about the Fediverse. So I'm trying to figure that out. And hmm. I may have to just give up. I, I'm old and, uh, you know, um, it's just too complicated. Um, but that was a well run. And there's, they've done that like six times. So I would look to that. Um, and they use a weird platform that no, I never heard of, but it worked kind of. Um, but um, they don't have a bank. Uh, it was you had to participate live. They don't have a bank of recording. So hmm. uh, that's the downside to that. So, yeah, there's so many different examples of this. And uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this one comes together. <laughs> um, you know, Australia is really big and New Zealand. Like, do you have to say them together? Or is there a word? that says both of them at the same time I don't Oce know. oceana ocean oh thank you yeah that's a nice i hope i hope they don't hate that word i have no idea um oceana is big in the e-portfolio space yeah uh, and so uh i find myself in australia often um on the wrong day it's so confusing um but uh, participating with the um uh, aaeebl people the e-portfolio people so um you know, I'm hoping we can weave all this stuff together. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, so this is, I'll spill the idea. Like when I was talking to Taylor and Jim about like some of the mechanics and we were going on about notebook LLM, we, we, we wanted to have a session where we pretend to talk like those two voices. <laughs> totally. Let's do a deep dive. Yeah, right. <laughs> Deep dive. Always deep dives. Yeah, it's got to be in the prompt. Somewhere. Exactly. <laughs> it's all about working smarter. Work, working smarter, not harder. I heard that one four times. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. I, okay. I'm so hoping... full disclosure, I'm working on editing a Notebook LM podcast. That's fine. Oh, okay. I, I think the shit's fun to play with. So. I, I think it's incredible. Like, like on, on its level for what it does with you know, synthetic. Yeah, voices. I mean, to put, so I, you know, so I loaded my documents, you know, and I'm a Google guy. I work for an institution that's a Google workspace for education institution. So I, I kind of have, well, I want to, and I have to kind of keep up with this. Um, so I loaded my documents um, into Notebook LM and uh, uh, typed in summarize, I, one word, I think, and then I clicked the button and I got a 12 minute podcast. That's yeah. kind of amazing. It is very amazing. I, and and I should I should, you know, clarify what I said earlier. I don't when I mean I don't know who it's for, I kind of mean in like a a longer term sense. I yeah. do think the idea of having a simple way to feed your own stuff into tools like this, um, and it and it be easy to use. Cause there are other ways you can use like, you know, local models and like yeah, I'm still it, trying to figure it, out rag. It's Can anybody really, really that? complicated though, and it's a lot of work to do. This is a delightful interface to do that with, right? Um, in my opinion. Um, and then the podcast thing is, yeah, it's just straight up impressive. What what I the the thing I always push back on is is people will go like, oh yeah, so like are is anyone gonna make podcasts anymore? And I'm like, they better, because these aren't like something <laughs> I want to listen to day in day out but it is interesting for what it is you know and i have to say there are multiple voices now sure and what i'm waiting for is to edit the text to edit the podcast and that's yeah. obviously going to happen next week or <laughs> yeah. next month whatever what's that there's that tool that lets you do audio editing from the script yeah. Yeah. yeah i use it it's pretty amazing yeah it's amazing and that's what i'm using so i created two podcasts two versions and i'm editing them together and you know yeah it's mediocre okay but 
to be able to do that in the few minutes that I've invested, well, in the hours behind the few minutes, but, um, you know, it's still, it's, it's interesting. And it's, sure. it's another tool in search of an audience and being in California and having spent 20 years in Santa Clara, California, I've seen a few tools look for audiences and go away and especially ones owned by Google. So, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. And I also, one of the other um, things I have planned for the last week in October, I have a conversation set up with uh, some of the board members of the open education conference. And I, I call it uh, two conferences, walk into a, I didn't say bar. I said, walk into a cafe. What do they talk about? So uh, a chance to talk about like both the, the events themselves, but I, I want to talk about the conference format. Um, Cause you know, I, I, participated remotely and there was there was a lot that I liked and so I'm still like I don't know what the the really the ideal formula is to have these you know mixed conferences but I, I think wh whatever that that we can do and honestly <laughs> I'm making this stuff talk about improv I'm just making this up as I go uh, so I, I have I have a bunch of people lined up on time slots and I'm gonna do some some various events um, and Hopefully, uh, I would like to think I could get enough audio um, to fill some blocks of time. You know, actually, I don't think there's much of a problem with that between podcasts and the stuff Reclaim has, and and we have stuff. Um, but I, I really want, I don't want to just put my stuff or our stuff out there. I, I want people to contribute, and so, um, you know, I, I've been working with. Um, th there's a, a a great project going on. Um, uh, coming out of uh, Wayne McIntosh, the OER Foundation, working with uh, uh, educators in the Pacific Islanders who have terrible internet. Um, and, you know, he's kind of setting them up with kind of like their open source platform um, for, for, for courseware, the wiki educator sort of thing and, and, and that whole thing. And I was like, Wayne, it'd be great to have some, uh, you know, some, some people who are some of the teachers out there or the, you know, the project seems like they're very shy. <laughs> they, people don't want to like put their work out there. They're very intimidated. And but what they're doing is so amazing. And, and th those are the things I, I want to tap into. Not as much. I just feel like so much when you talk about you know online conference or the conference itself, it's so wrapped up in the presentation. And um, you know, virtual connecting was that example, Mark. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing trying some flavor of that. I don't know if it'll be virtually connecting, but I mean, everybody knows that some of the most beneficial things that happened was like being there at OER 24 and being in conversation with, with Meredith and Marin and Brian Mathers was there. And, and we don't make enough spaces for those like unstructured conversations, you know, which is why I like what, you know, this is, this is my style of doing podcast. I, I, I just did one with, with Brian Mathers and we, we didn't have a script. And, and we just had a conversation and, and I'm what more of that. Yeah, I've been no. thinking about the public house, you know, I'm really interested in the commons, the enclosure of the commons, you know, the history of Scotland and the UK. It's part of my heritage. Um, and I just wonder if we couldn't frame this as a public house, you know, using open education theory and open practices and, you know, open software, all that, blah, blah, blah. And it could be, you know, two groups walk into a public house and they're first they're in groups and they're talking and then they're hearing each other and then they start talking across and then maybe they take the room in the back, you know, say, hey, can we get the room for an hour? Let's go, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, and being an American, I have limited experience in a real public houses, unfortunately, because everything's totally enclosed. Uh, but I just like that as an idea, the idea of the public house as part of the commons, you know, and then it's the third space and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Well, come on. We know that there's the Internet Town Hall. You know, I've been standing with my thumb out trying to get on the superhighway for a long time. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Tim. No, uh, you. you you should go ahead. Tim. Are you sure? Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, Alan, at the risk of saying something that's, um, I know would be obvious to you, but um, one of the things about um, uh, virtual conferencing, virtual uh, meetings, 
that I think uh, took us a while to figure out, but was a really positive development is the ways in which we decided to sort of humanize those spaces by show us your pets, you know, um, all of that kind of stuff. And, and it occurs to me that if you're inviting an international audience um, to a radio conference sort of a format, um, encourage them to record the ambient sort of field sound of where they are in the world, whether yeah. it's urban or rural. And yeah. so I'm going to put in one of my favorite uh, podcasts. It's called Framework. Um, that's field recordings, found sound. Um, it's it's based out of I want to say Croatia, somewhere in Eastern Europe, and it's been wow. it's been around for over a decade. Um, and it doesn't have to be very sophisticated. It could just be the whatever the mic can pick up on a phone. But as a way of sort of personalizing our aural spaces, um, if you're going to participate, just take take two or three minutes of field sound and edit that into the beginning of whatever program it is or, or yeah. live stream it in even better if you have a mic that we can do that with. Um, things like... Um, you know, uh, uh, IzzyCast or whatever, yeah. the different apps that might permit that kind of stuff to happen uh, through the IceCast uh, connection, um, that could be really, really interesting. Yeah, and I, I yeah, I've been playing with IzzyCast, and I think it's it's like a great solution for someone who wants to do um, th that sort of like environmental or just on the spot um, bit. And so I'm going to be. <laughs> like promoting that as well. I mean, I'd like to get some students maybe at the conference last year in Edmonton, we had students doing like support and photography and social media. Um, but I, I dreamed of like, you know, having a, a roving microphone um, during like so, some of the conversations. Um, I put one of my favorite ones, it's called tree.fm. And um, it's just so beautiful to hear the sounds of forests from different places in the world. Radio garden is just mm -hmm. amazing. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Tim. I'm trying to figure out a way to put out like a call for, for that. Um, maybe something during the pre-conference week is sort of an activity um, to ask people um, to record. Um, and, you know, I, there's lots of ways to get that sound from them. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I think it's really like I've always been fascinated by that idea about we don't think so much um, about the ambient sounds where we live in, in cities and 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 how much that generates um you know i remember early ds106 radio scott low um he would do these like a broadcast walking around tokyo um and he would deliberately do this thing where he didn't talk for a while and so you could just hear like you know kids in the park and um you know the sound of like you know people husking their wares or things like that and it's really powerful i agree to be able to hear the sounds of the world yeah, um, Rowan Peter, during the pandemic, when we were all on lockdown, um, took his mic to the skate park. Ah, yeah. And I know I'm, you know, a softy, but like I, I was moved to yeah. tears just knowing that human connection so far away. Um, and, and kids would come up and say, what are you recording? And he'd say, you're on the radio. And, you know, <laughs> it was just awesome and very simple, but incredibly powerful in that particular moment, you know? Yeah. Well, I'm definitely hoping to, to, um, rope Rowan. Uh, it's been, I've been out of touch with him for a long time. I, he's, he's just fantastic. I know his love of, of skate parks. Um, and, uh, gosh, one time in Melbourne, he, he found, we went to this exhibit. It was the giant. What was it? it was this thing I can't remember the sonic installation. It was this big metal pyramid um, that when you approached it, it would make sounds uh, like industrial sounds, and it was like this brilliant thing. And we we broadcasted on DS one hundred six radio, and yeah, th those impromptu things. I think Tim is what I'm talking about. Is is that's what I would like to tap into? Um, this has got me thinking a lot about too. Like so, I. Um, I, I put a lot of time and energy into like the setup, right? Like eight from an AV. I have a, I have a microphone. Do I need this? Absolutely not. Stupid. But I, it's also a hobby, right? And the cool thing I think about like DS106 radio is you have that, right? You have some folks who are going to the nines and doing like really, you know, they've got like broadcaster, like Tim, I think you use like a broadcaster sometimes for your stuff. 
And then you also have folks that are just like, yeah, I put my phone on a table. It's using EasyCast. But they both work like pretty well. Yeah. And, the, you know, the nature, it's some simple things, right? Because it's a broadcast format, you can just simply turn the volume up if you can't hear them really well. And it's not always perfect, obviously. But there's there's some there's some things like that that really, I, I think it's it's part of the format, but it's also the culture that's been built up around the S106 radio. And and it's got me thinking one of one of my projects that I don't know when I'm going to get to it. Maybe, maybe this winter, it sounds like a good winter project is I really want to make like a DS one Oh six radio appliance. <laughs> and that is, I want to like hook up a raspberry Pi that all it does is when it boots up, it plays the stream yeah, and then plug that into like a single tiny speaker, like, like a Bluetooth speaker or something like an old one. Um, and I want to be able to just like plug that in and that's DS one Oh six radio. And now I'm kind of thinking of like, what is the opposite of that? Like what, if, and obviously a, a phone is the real answer for most people that isn't a little bit s- stupid like I am because I like little appliances like this. <laughs> um, but like, what is it? What, could, 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 it, could someone make a, you know, one click go to DS106 radio box and all it has is maybe one or two simple microphones, maybe so it could be stereo so you could hear the environment. And I love the idea of, you know, we have folks doing vinyl casting and things like that. And, and sometimes that's pretty complicated in terms of like mixing that in with your voice. Mm-hmm. But what if you just put a record on in a room, <laughs> put this in the middle and you had two people talking next to it? Yeah. And how could, you know, like, I don't know. I, I, this, this is like a quarter of an idea, but I'm, I'm, I'm interested in kind of incorporating the idea of that, you know, the ambient sound that you all are talking about because... That is a really cool thing and something that is sometimes literally not possible over video conferencing because it filters mm-hmm. it, right? And there's good reasons they do that. Um, but also it's it's usually not desirable. It's just not how, especially with a two-way conversation, right? Yeah, and a shout out to Paul Bond too, who I think within the last couple of months went to a thrift store where he goes and yeah. just plays records and it was the conversation of all of the people coming into the thrift store talking about the music that he put on the record player. Really fun to listen to, you know. Um, but like you said, it wasn't pristine audio by any means. It was really rough. And sometimes you had to turn it up or not hear. But, um, yeah, I mean, come on. Where else are you going get, to get something like that except DS-106 radio? Oh, that was like Dr. Garcia, Gina Garcia would – have her phone thing and she'd walk to like the convenience store and she would like give some smack to the clerk or something like that. And, and I, I, I'm like, I, I'm glad you brought this up, Tim. I, I really want to roll it in. I, I was thinking what, what, there was some kind of like photo project, like the noon project or something where it encouraged people to take pictures at the same time. Um, and I'm wondering if maybe like that could be a little structure to do the sound thing. Like, you know, what is your, what does your world sound like at 3 PM? Yeah. Um, or well you could have i don't know some kind of simple to use form that collects media yeah um you know that people could submit those things to yeah they have these things on the web right yeah <laughs> some kind of wordpress based thing that would be easy to use for that that's under um, some kind of like gravitational force right <laughs> well i'm i'm, I'm thinking like a, a, a simpler acronym like SWAT, oh, okay you know there so, you yeah. go oh yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, those things never maybe work. taylor can build something where um <laughs> Dozens of people can live stream their ambient sound at the same time. That's one thing that I would love, like a fantasy tool, is I like I would love some way to someone, a web developer, to make a thing where you could have multiple streams, video, maybe audio, and just kind of easily switch between them. And I've always thought of this for like something like what you just said would be interesting, like if you just switch between them. Um, but also even from a standpoint of making hybrid stuff easy, you know, with the hybrid like uh, video production is immensely complicated. And you usually want to like hire someone to do it and they have a team of people. But like what if they could just go to a URL on their phone and now you've got multiple camera angles, you know? Um, well, there was that thing that, that Graham Potter put together where there was you could for a while you could call a 1-800 number and go on the air. And so oh, people cool. were calling in from pay phones. Uh, the, whatever he was using stopped working. 
Um, but there's this, this other thing I came across last year. It, it was like a, um, it was a number you could call and record a short message and it was like an answering machine. And then a couple hours later, your, your message uh, would, would appear on this list of, of, of like, just, it, it was kind of goofy. Um, uh, yeah, I was trying, I can't remember the, the name of, of what it was, but it was like, it was really funky. It looked like old school, like windows interface um, and uh, kind of a playback, but you know, like imagine like something you could call in a phone number and, and leave a message that would later be broadcast. Um, this is, sorry, go ahead. No, there, there, there was you know, for a while in that splat box, it, I kind of had it working. There was like a way to record directly, um, but it was really funky. And I think I kind of yanked it out because um, it wasn't predictable. Uh, sorry, yeah. go ahead, pilot. <laughs> well, it, it's, it's taking kind of a step back. I'm just thinking about um, the idea of making it really easy for people to get up and running and what that would take because earlier we were talking about what the sort of behind the scenes setup had to be for DS106 radio, a uh, summer camp and using streamer and things like that. And I think one of the things that we talked about and then discarded and then considered from other angles was making it really easy for first timers to get involved in one capacity or another. Um, and I think we, uh, I floated and then everyone else rightfully sort of shot down the idea of like, when you register, say whether you want to be paired with a buddy who will teach you and then we'll do like a little matchmaking thing. And that that was going to be way, that was <laughs> going to be no good. Um, but the StreamYard workaround ended up being how we just said, hey, if you want to present, you don't have to, if you already know how the radio part works and you want to do that, that's great. If you want to present and you don't know how the radio part works, don't worry about it. We're going to do that part. Mm -hmm. And that involves StreamYard and hooking things up through um, uh, uh, audio, hijack. audio hijack and and all of that. But at the end of the conference, we were still left with this sort of question of, well, we wanted to make it really, really easy to get up and running if you mm -hmm. didn't, if you just wanted to present. But how do people now, having had this experience, take it forward? Because they're not really in a position to do what we did and hook together all these things and get StreamYard. One of the things I really want, to, another thing I really want to make, I have way more ideas than time and certainly ability. <laughs> um, but one of the things I really wanted, I, I, there's this tool called WebTop, and it's basically like a little, um, it runs in Docker, but basically what it is, it's a little tiny desktop that you can access in a web browser and you can install applications in it. My thought was, what if we installed something that could broadcast to DS106 radio and then a web browser? And so the, the method was you go to this site and you, what you see is a web browser and you connect it to your video call. So in this case, you would type in meet.reclaimhosting.com slash community chat, and it would be just a empty, you know, sixth in this case box, but it was of course capturing the audio and putting it on the radio. And that would be such like a, I feel like a in relatively intuitive way to do that. And it would work, you know, you could do zoom has a web client and like that, you know, that you could use whatever thing really. Um, but, uh, it turns out that's way harder than it sounds to make. Um, <laughs> um, I, I haven't given up though. Um, but, but yeah. So but I'm I, one of the people that checked the box and said, I'd like to learn how to do this, <laughs> but I never heard back from it. <laughs> Just, I, I think at a certain point we 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 decided that it was from our capacity standpoint going to be easier for and it's something we do want to do but we we decided for summer camp we're like right let's folks that have done it that's cool they can do it folks that have a recording we'll broadcast a recording for them and folks that haven't done it before we'll we'll just do it for them this time well let me turn that around and say i'm interested in learning how to do it so that i can support other people at the upcoming conference yeah absolutely yeah. So I, for that, I'll say there is a, um, so there, there's the DS106 radio community on 
uh, Mastodon, but there's also a Discord too, and that's probably the easiest way to now get in touch with folks to um, to learn how to do it. And there's um, I, there was a, some conversation around tools for this. Um, we've mentioned Audio Hijack. That's a Mac exclusive thing. On Windows, I really like Rocket Broadcaster. Um, is pretty easy to use. In fact, I think in some ways easier to use in Audio Hijack. Um, it's free. Um, and then there's another one called um, Broadcast Using This Tool, which is <laughs> the, the acronym is BOT. Um, <laughs> and that one is kind of complicated. It works, but you need to do some jiggering with like sound drivers and stuff like that. And I think that even has a Linux version because we that was one of the things that someone said, I, I'm on Linux. And I was like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> like, Mix I, is I, also, it's mixed yeah. with three X's. Mix. Yeah. Three um, is multi-platform. Who's I, that? Mix. M Mix is pretty complicated, but it's a that's full DJing tool. And that's Mi what like. Um, yeah. You almost Mi need li like a web version of IzzyCast where, you know, <laughs> you go yeah. in and you click a button. <laughs> yeah, there there is a web DJ tool for AzuraCast, but it it's um, it's a little weird. <laughs> um, and it's something I would like to be easier. The problem is what it can do is it can capture your microphone or you can upload MP3s. And that works pretty well, but um, lots of people don't have local MP3 collections anymore. Um, so if you're just doing audio and it's just you, that's cool. But it gets real complicated when you have more than one person and they're not in the same room as each other. Hmm. It seems all doable. I mean, we've got the the you know synchronous gathering tools that have audio and then you've got this broadcasting thing and there's just something missing in the middle <laughs> yeah it's i think it's something about the you know web radio is homegrown web radio is pretty niche you know yeah um and so there's just not a lot of tooling specifically for that but you're right all of the constituent parts the hard stuff we've we we're talking synchronously over the internet right now yeah and it works pretty well um, that's done, right? <laughs> we don't have to do that. Uh, we just have to make that a feed that a Zuracast could do something with. And there are ways um, that I think could work, but um, it would require a little bit of research and time. So I have to go teach a class at the top of the hour. Uh, can you wrap this up, Alan? What are we doing? <laughs> What are we doing? <laughs> uh, I, I have to uh, kind of like get a call for participation out, you know, so people in uh, the, you know, I'll post something in our OEG Connect. Um, I'm trying to get, we're, we're trying to assemble some information um, on the conference website. Um, so um, really I, I'm looking uh, for, oh, thank you. Uh, I'm looking for, um, you know, just some active participation during the, the last week in October. Um, if, if you, uh, I'll be putting out a thing, like if you know of any webinars going on that we can just put, add to a schedule just to have a sense of these are things going on this week. Um, Cause anything's I'll, I'll make anything related, you know, to, to what we're doing. Um, and then I, I have already, you know, from, at least two to four things planned per day um, that, that I'm hustling. Um, but also I, I really want to try to get stimulated um, the, the people doing things asynchronously um, in the, the connect platform. So um, we're starting to see a few things come in, but like, okay, you can't present, uh, but there's other ways to share your work. And, and for God's sake, please don't post a presentation file, but if you will, I won't complain. Um, but like, it's, it's as simple as like, you know, we're looking for people to share their work or ask questions or just like, I'm trying, you know, I'm, I'm looking for other, you know, you know, whether it's, you know, librarians connect with librarians. Uh, there's a real interesting like group uh, of interest in uh, public libraries. Cause a lot of the OER stuff is really focused on academic librarians and public libraries do an incredible amount of work um, and don't get any attention. And then, you know, of course, you know, the ed tech stuff, um, and, and mostly just trying to like get some like global participation. Uh, so yeah, that's not a specific answer, Mark. But um, no, it's if, fine. That's yeah, that's what I'm looking for. You know, I yeah, realize I'll, I'll be 
Yeah, I'll be looking. Well. Yeah, over the couple next weeks, I'm I'm really looking for some you know interesting content that uh, I can put into the audio, uh, basically a program schedule. So if uh, I'm thinking, I'll ask people if they you know if they have just a short thing, yeah, that's fine. I'll have like an open thing. But if people want to fill like a half hour block or an hour block or like a 15 minute block, I'll I'll try to like make that happen. Um, I, I don't know how I'm doing this. And and like Myron's advice to me was like, Alan, scale back your ideas. And I'm not listening. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. I have one thing that I've been thinking about that I want to do. Maybe this is the place, maybe not. Um, you know, David Wiley gave that presentation recently. And that was kind of a big deal, uh, despite the deniers and the naysayers and the critics. And, you know, everybody was talking about it. And so um, is this a place to uh, first maybe rebroadcast it and then have a room or whatever, you know, have a conversation afterwards or yeah. during or, you know. So that's the one thing that I've just been carrying around. And I don't know what to do with. And so here it is. Uh, there's that. And I'd really like that people discuss uh, the talk that Robin DeRosa did last week at open ed, because yeah. Yeah, I it's, watched hard, that. it's hard hitting. And, and like, everybody yeah. goes, yeah, that's hard hitting. And then, then there's a little silence and they're like, okay, can we talk about OER now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's the, it's hard hitting and little science silence is the part that I think Robin intends and yeah. wants yeah um very she's very clear about that actually yeah. um and uh yeah i think there's room to discuss a couple of those things and, and in a lot of ways her talk and david wiley's talk you could you could draw a lot of connections between um in in terms of between the two not that they're similar in message at all um, yeah. Yeah. but yeah no con contrast is good so, all right. Yeah. So, I'll reach out to you, Alan, through the platform. Yeah, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, and and, and I'll I'll be making a call for suggestions. And, and th thanks for yeah, that'd be definitely uh, easy to do to get a you know the audio. Yeah, and I'm always to. open to volunteering to help screw things up. So you yeah, know, you know how to reach me. Yeah. Um, yeah. I need so all I have one minute to get to Santa Fe, New Mexico, and it's okay. a long. Okay. Bye. See ya. <laughs> have a thanks. good trip, Mark. <laughs> yep. So we'll uh, I get out of here. <laughs> Thanks for letting me blab, Taylor. And of course. <laughs> Taylor, you're going to have to kick him out. Yeah, yeah. kick me out, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, we'll wrap in a second, but I just wanted to, to shout again for anyone who's watching or listening to this later, um, go to connect.oeglobal.org. Um, make sure you have an account there. And that's, that's I think, we're probably the best way to stay up to date on this stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, and actually, you don't need – you can read everything there. That's okay. all open. But – uh, we really want people to participate in the conversations. And so it, it's, it, yeah, it's easy to create an account. Um, awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for um, stopping by and chatting and thanks everyone who watched or listened to this and um, we'll see you next time.